Mark Haynes, a member here at Pulaski Heights. Uh, welcome you guys this morning to our service. Get away from that microphone. Um, we're so glad that you guys are here with us today. And um, if you will, um, stand and join us as we sing our next hymn.
please be seated. All right. We've got any children that want to come up, and if you have a gift, we've got a basket that you can put it in. Come down here, and we'll have a few, a few words. I think we almost had more children than adults today. It's great. I love it. Thank you for putting that in. Good morning. Can you guys hear, see down there? I've got a, I got a box here. Can you guys see this box? Can anybody tell me what that word is? Disappear. What does disappear mean? It just vanishes. All right. So I want to see something that happens here. All right, what are those? And what happens to them? They just disappear, don't they? So today's scripture talks about forgiveness. Who knows what forgiveness is? Oh, what's forgiveness? Yep, if somebody does something to you, you forgive them. What were you going to say? Um, um, if somebody does something and you don't like it, mm -hmm. and you hurt people, um, you kind of feel like you're, you're forgiven. Yeah. So she said if somebody does something that you don't like and you say, and they say they're sorry, then you forgive them. So let's think about that. How is forgiveness kind of like bubbles? How is that kind of like a bubble? Because if you forgive somebody, then what do you do? You forget about what they did, and it kind of disappears. So what's um, in our scripture today, God says that when you come to him and that you know God, that he will forgive you. And he won't even remember what sins were. So it's kind of like those bubbles. If those bubbles were sins, once they're down on the ground and they just poof, that's what happens when you ask people for forgiveness. So let's have a quick prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this wonderful world and these beautiful children and all the opportunity that they have. Let us all remember that sins like bubbles can disappear if we ask for it, and if we let it happen. Amen. And I've got something here that you can take with you to make disappear on your way back to your seat. Come on. And if you're going to go to children's choir, you can go to the back and check out. Make sure your parents signed you out. No, it just have to have this one. But you could maybe swap with somebody. Amen. Thank you, Mark. As the children are heading back to their seats and or to sign up for Children's Choir, at this time, I'd like to uh, welcome you to Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church. My name is Trenton Teagarden. Uh, we are going to have a little bit different thing for our uh, sermon today, um, for our message. Reverend Belinda Price um, had a family emergency this weekend, and so she's not going to uh, be here with us this morning. So we're going to pipe in uh, from the sanctuary later on and and have our message that way. Um, at this time, I invite you to check out the uh, Connect card and fill out your attendance. If we have any visitors this morning, um, welcome, special welcome to all our visitors. We have a special gift for you um, at the uh, end of our service. Uh, so if you will see our welcome desk out here, we can uh, give you that gift. At this time, let us go to God in prayer. The Lord be with you. During our uh, prayer time, uh, we're gonna do something a little bit different as well. Um, there's a congregational response that I would like you to say as I um, say our prayers to the people. And that congregation response is, joy of every longing heart, make our hearts beat with yours. So can we try that together? Joy of every longing heart, make our hearts beat with yours. So throughout the prayer, you'll hear me say, and so we pray. And so and I invite you to join in, in that response when you hear those words, and so we pray.
Holy God, we are still in the wilderness. We are leaning the way and getting better at following, yet this is still the wilderness. We are not yet fully renewed. And so we pray, joy of every longing heart, make our hearts beat with yours. With people still kept in poverty or slavery, some in fear from abusers, terrorists, and oppressors, some facing addiction, some targeted for unjust treatment because of who they are. And now we see how our own actions or inactions leave things as they are or make them worse. And so we pray, joy of every longing heart, make our hearts beat with yours. With all who need your healing power and all who offer healing through that skill and presence, with all creation with whom we share this planet, those who sustain our lives and those who threaten us, those whose lives we sustain and those whose lives we threaten. And so we pray, joy of every longing heart, make our hearts beat with yours. We pray for those in our own congregation here at home, those who are um, hospitalized recently include Eloise Bethe, Joel Lively, Reverend John Pelton, Henry Rufflin Oakley, Lamar Windham. Our Christian sympathy is extended to Helen Ann Hill and family and the death of her father, Hiram Hill. And to the friends and family of Margaret Lipton in her recent death. We rejoice in the birth of Gabriel Peril Gross, child of Susan and Chip Gross, and to Christian Sebastian Ronaldo Crane, child of Esperesna and Chris Manessa Crane, and grandchild of Pat and Larry Crane. We rejoice in the grace of the baptism of Grace Ivory Bridges, child of Brooke and Kyle Bridges, of Catherine Humphrey Mall, child of Meredith and Timothy Mall and of Michael Lynn Retzer III, child of Jacqueline and Michael Retzer Jr. We also rejoice in the baptism of Elizabeth Clare and Hedley Monroe Simmons, children of Lauren and John Simmons. We give thanks and rejoice for our new members, Mallory and Tyler Lindsay, and Brittany and Christopher McCauley. And so we pray, joy of every longing heart, make our hearts beat with yours. Receive these prayers of your people, most merciful God. In your compassion, forgive our sins. Stir up our hope in your redemption and make our hearts beat more and more with yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Please stand as you are able for a reading from Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. It won't be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. They broke that covenant with me even though I was their husband, declares the Lord. No, this is the covenant that I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my instructions within them and engrave them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. They will no longer need to teach each other saying, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wrongdoing and never remember their sins. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Let us join in a spirit of prayer. Gracious God, either through me or in spite of me, speak the good news that we may all hear it, embrace it, and above all, live it. In the name of Jesus the Christ, the risen one. Amen. When I was growing up, our family sometimes drove slowly through the old neighborhoods. This ritual was usually prompted by a family homecoming. An aunt, a cousin, or a sibling had come back to Arkansas for a visit. And since back then there was no Google Earth to check out the old home places, we'd get in the car and actually go for a drive. Mind you, these drives were history. My family's. Most of the time we'd, we'd go through the streets of older parts of Little Rock. We might drive by what had been once been my great-grandfather's store on Main Street. It was a grocery store. Thereupon, my aunt and mother would trade stories about how they had lived behind the store during the Great Depression, how they tormented one another on the old screen porch, at least until they could hear the sounds of my grandmother's high heels clicking on the floorboards as she closed in on them to break up their sibling squabbles. Sometimes we drove the car past the houses in Riverside where we lived, not far from actually where one of my brothers fell in the pond by the golf course. It was freezing weather, the water was iced over and you know, it was tempting. Of course he walked across it. And since he wasn't Jesus, you know what happened. Later that day, mother discovered a curious pair of wet jeans and didn't know until years later how bad it could have been. And there's Schiller Street too, Rod Avenue and Schiller. That's where the infamous campfires happened. The ones my father discovered when he found piles of ashes in the attic. I'm told he bounded down the ladder, yelling, belt in hand, scattering boys who were running for their lives. At some point, we'd head to southwest Little Rock and pass the teeny tiny house on Sunnydale where I was born. Many times, still do, see those photos of my mom pregnant with me in front of that house, the one we long since left. Last week I was at Hendrix College where I attended school many years ago. I parked my car. I headed to the work workshop I was attending in the student life and Technology Center. Now, I've been in that building before, but I have no fond memories of that building. I mean, I've even passed through the cafeteria line upstairs and, and gotten a tray and eaten there. But I assure you, there was no salad bar with quinoa when I was there. 
after the workshop was over, I left the building to go to the bookstore across the street. And as I walked north, I adjusted my eye to this expanding campus layout. I could see a building under construction to my left, and I could see the new Dawkins Welcome Center now completed ahead of me where the old rainy religion building used to be, where I used to sit on Fridays. More precisely, I would sit in the rainy building or lean against the door or lounge on a sofa and talk with religion and philosophy types every Friday afternoon. Some of the conversations I do remember, but more than anything, when I think of that space and that place, I feel a sense of home. I feel I was understood. I remember that I was known. A couple of years ago, they raised that building, and I bought a brick in memory of that building because I wanted a piece of my time there, that particular time in my life, because it's now gone. That part of life is over. When I think back on what's gone before, I think of this old pop song, Piano Man, written and sung back in the day by Billy Joel. And when he sings it, when I hear him sing it, you can see the people he carefully describes most of whom are either stuck or have seen better days. It's nine o'clock on a Saturday. The regular crowd shuffles in. There's an old man sitting next to me making love to his tonic and gin. And he says, son, can you play me a memory? I'm not really sure how it goes, but it's sad and it's sweet, and I knew it complete when I wore a younger man's clothes. Sometimes the memories of times gone by and of people we've lost are as soothing as a familiar song that we might hear on the radio or on our own playlist, and yet sometimes the pain and loss are too great. What of the child who was displaced to the custody of the state in the midst of political disputes? What of the man who is formerly incarcerated and now seeks a job, but every time he completes an application, it asks him if he is a convicted felon. In the family with two parents and two children who are living in a car because the rent is too high and the wages are too low, and all they hope for is just a tiny apartment. What of those Judean exiles driven out by invaders foreigners who, who took their homes, pillaged whatever they wanted, and as often is the case, killed those who stood in the way. They lost homes and were forced to pick up their lives in Babylon in a totally different culture. No homeland, no temple, no nothing familiar. The pain and loss was too great. Sometimes we need to hear words of consolation as much as bread to eat. Even if the words do not bring a sudden and miraculous change or an immediate improvement in our circumstances, we still need to be comforted when we have lost something or have been displaced we need comfort when someone has told us we don't belong or we are unworthy of love. We need comfort when our current reality does not match the promise or the future for which we long. 
And it is in this place precisely, this place of loss, when the prophet Jeremiah unrolls the scroll of comfort where we find today's or tonight's scripture passage that Linda read. In it, Jeremiah's words are God's words. They are answers to the kinds of questions we are most afraid to ask. Questions like, why did God let this happen to us? Why have our enemies been victorious? Has God abandoned us? happen to us now? Will there be a future at all? And the answer, the time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with people of Israel and Judah. It won't be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I led them out of Egypt. They broke that covenant. Now this covenant this covenant I will make after a time, and I will put my instructions within them, engraving it on their hearts. Jeremiah says these are God's words. But God's words about the future, I have found, do not happen all at once. As we have reminded ourselves during this Lenten sermon series, rehab is hard. It is hard to live through a time of loss and grief. It is hard to prosper when your life has fallen completely apart. Sometimes it feels as if we are just going through the motions. It takes all our energy just to get through one day at a time. And for some, just one hour at a time. And here's the word of comfort. No matter what you are going through, no matter how much it hurts or how difficult it is to imagine a future with hope, I promise you, says God, that it will get better one day. And you are not alone. I am as close as the heart that beats within you. Always. Or another way to put it, one day, one day the house of Israel and the house of Judah will be restored. One day you will be able to return to the land that the Lord gave you. One day your homes and your businesses will be rebuilt. One day you will have work again. One day your divorce will be a thing of the past. One day shame will no longer control your life. One day your grief will become manageable and you will smile and laugh again. One day you will no longer be a slave to your addiction. One day there will be a new covenant. One day the sins of the past will be forgiven and you will be given a fresh start the slate will be wiped completely clean. One day, says the Lord, Christ will come in final victory and we will feast at his heavenly banquet. I promise. I promise, says the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please uh, register your attendance on the Connect card and um, prepare ourselves to uh, give of ourselves back to God. I see hope coming on the horizon. There's no need for hiding 
In this spirit, let us silently offer our prayers to God.
hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. And in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. Let us turn to one another and offer the peace of Christ this morning. with you and also with you lift up your hearts we are yours O god bless the lord god's holy name be pra- god's holy name be praised. be praised praise in heaven praise in earth praise throughout your creation in your name holy triune god from generation to generation you, you have, have been, been true, true to your, your promises You transform us from the inside out and And claim claim us as as your your people. people. So with prophets, leaders, and faithful people, we with all all creation creation cry holy. Holy, 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 holy Lord. God God of power and might, heaven and earth earth are full of your your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Jesus Christ, word made flesh. You are the new covenant, God with us. And within us, you are making all things new. Blessed are you, Jesus Christ. Merciful are you, for coming among us and for offering yourself to us in this holy meal to fill our hungry and erring souls and to empower us to break free from Satan's lies and follow where you lead, loving God and neighbor, fully as ourselves. With your first disciples on the night of your betrayal and to death you took bread. Blessed it. And broke it and gave it, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Then you took the cup, gave thanks and gave it, saying, Drink from this, my blood of the new covenant for you. Even so, here and now, come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come upon these gifts and upon us, make them... Be for us Christ's body and blood, that we who receive them may be for all the body of Christ, enlivened by his blood. Come, Holy Spirit, make make us us one. one. Come, Holy Spirit, unite unite us us with you. Come, Holy Spirit, revive revive us. Dwell in our hearts, O Christ, and make us fully your people this day and every day until that day when we shall feast with you in new creation. To you, all merciful creator, through Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we raise our cry of thanks. All praise and honor and glory are yours. Blessed triune God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, we invite the service to come forward.
we prepare for Holy Communion, we have an open table in the United Methodist Church. Members and guests are welcome to come. We will have um, receive communion by intention. You simply receive the bread, likely dip it in the cup. It's most appropriate to say amen or thanks be to God. And on my far left, there's a gluten-free station. Come and enjoy the feast that has been prepared for you.
membership matters class will be uh, May 5th and if you do not have a church home in Little Rock we invite you to join Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church and you may start uh, that process today receive this benediction go forth now from this place as people of God loving neighbors in Jesus name Amen Hallelujah.